<laughs> That's nice. There's a warning on the screen. Let me fix that. <laughs> That's a great way to start a live stream, isn't it? Hey, warning, that's not a great battery. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Scott Dowler. Uh, We've hit 10,000 on the channel. Wow, thanks everybody, that's awesome. Like, didn't expect that to happen like ever. Especially if you like look at Instagram and it takes like four months to get 10, 10 followers on that train wreck. And then they're just people who are replaying TikToks anyway. So I don't know, I'm not, I'm not cool enough to be on TikTok. So I'm gonna stay here on YouTube and do this thing for you. Anyway, today we're going to fight some crime in uh, Capture One. We're going to do Photoshop, and we're actually going to add in some mid-journey as well. I've been doing a lot of mid-journey videos, and uh, I'm loving the asset creation in that. So we're going to tangle with a bit of that today. Again, this is something I haven't attempted uh, with this specific picture, so we may encounter some challenges. We may screw up. It may be amazing. Uh, I don't know, but you'll get to follow along as I fuddle through it, and you can decide whether or not you like it. Um, I know some people are complaining about the music in the background. I don't know what to do there. Like, do you like dead air? Like, I'm trying to have it in the background. I'm also having it try and be something that's inconsequential, just jazz. It's just fine, you know, rather than, you know, like, I was teasing about Tibetan throat singing or uh, heavy metal bluegrass, you know. I, I just think that the jazz works. It's there, but yet it's not quiet. So we're going to work on that today. And I have um, a camera set up so you'll be able to see this keyboard and the mouse and whatever uh, instead of looking at the side of my head the whole time. We're going to try that out, too. So I'm just trying some different stuff here to see what works best. And I'd love your feedback, uh, so let me know. So let's try this other camera here. And it's uh, way up there, um, and it's tiny. There we go. Okay. All right, so we're going to use that camera. And uh, once we go into Photoshop, then uh, it'll make more sense. Uh, but let me know what you think. Thanks to, again, everybody who's supporting the channel. You guys are amazing, and I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, you guys are, are fantastic. I mean, really just... Like, like from the bottom of my heart, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate you. Uh, so, all right. So today we're going to play in this with this image here of Jennifer. And we're going to uh, do something with the background. I was thinking about doing kind of a cityscape thing. So I went into mid journey and I, I mocked up a couple things. We're going to look at how I created those. And uh, and then, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll fiddle with it and see what we need. And we'll uh, continue to explore it if we need to. So um, first thing I do. Uh, so this is Capture One. If you're not familiar with the channel, this is kind of what we base this channel on is Capture One and Photoshop. And uh, Mid Journey is obviously part of the visual world, uh, so that's where I'm kind of going toward. Um, just because I like it, I like the product, I like what it does, and it adds to my art instead of it being just art itself. Uh, I'm using it as a point of departure. Uh, so adding it to the background of images is kind of where I see myself using it. Uh, so inside of Capture One here, this is me, uh, Capture One and Photoshop uh, heavy today. We're not gonna do a ton of Mid Journey, but we will be in there and we will be pulling some images down and then smashing them into this image here uh, to make a finished product. So that's the entire thing. So we're gonna start in our raw editor here, Capture One, and we're gonna fix our uh, exposure. So her skin is a bit bright, uh, but I know my camera really well, so this is perfect for what we're trying to do here. Um, I just need to bring her skin down uh, so it's reasonable. Um, and I am gonna bring the black point up a little bit and the shadow up a little bit, just so that I can see the top of her head. Um, that's the biggest concern here is that we don't lose figure to ground and that's the ability to kind of tell where she ends and the background starts i had other images from this set that i really enjoyed but they had that same issue and realistically this one has a better hand position here uh, typically you don't want to see the back of the hand facing the camera that's a that's a bad thing uh, so i think this looks pretty good we can always add more contrast later but for now i want to kind of have a little bit more information going into um into Photoshop than otherwise. So I'm gonna pull the white down a little bit just in here. Um, I'm not gonna use highlight recovery because I think this just does all kinds of other things to the image that are undesirable. Like I like this light on her face to be more obvious. And this isn't really affecting her face so much. It's just the skull in the center of the chest. Uh, so we're gonna go with that. And I think maybe a little bit more black, just a tiny bit more. Um, I don't want it to be, I don't want to do something like this, right? Don't, if, if you're doing that, then you learn to, you need to learn to use your camera. What I'm looking for here is just more delineation with the top of her head. Uh, and that looks pretty good. I want to avoid that orangeness of adding too much, uh, black recovery to this. So that's kind of where we're going now. All right. And then we'll worry about that when we get into Photoshop. So speaking of Photoshop, let's go there now. So I have a recipe that just puts her name in front of the, uh, the title here. That's all it's really doing. It doesn't do much of anything else, but it, moves it into Photoshop for us as a 16-bit TIFF. 
and we'll start working in Photoshop there. So um, I will grab my welcome talent, which I wish would behave. Okay, so let's, uh, we're going to do first is we're going to kind of mock up what we want. So normally I always retouch the skin first and, and we just get that out of the way. But let's, let's play with it first to see if we can get what we need out of it. Um, because if we are going to get the skin already touched and then fail at the rest of the image, like I'd kind of like to know that early on. So let's try that hard part first because the skin retouching is easy. Let's do the hard part first and the mid journey part, which is all I think a lot of people are looking forward to. If you're not familiar with mid journey, it's an AI art creation engine where you give it a text uh, field. I've done a whole bunch of videos on that. If you're not familiar with it, um, you're, you're, and you're watching this channel, then you're missing out. Um, but you basically will give it a text prompt and it will take a noise field and then attempt to find images in that noise. Um, this is actually a principle of thermodynamics actually, but that's not something for today's conversation. Uh, so I did is I generated some here, some cities, uh, bleak Blade Runner. These are kind of the descriptions I used and the aspect ratio, I wanted it wide. Um, the one I decided on so far is this one. So this one is the same image. Uh, but you see we have a lot of detail in here um, or this one is the same image but it has a lot less detail i think this is more appropriate for the background behind her uh, and strategy wise when we're trying to to photo bash is what we're doing uh, the a, a figure we we photographed with a background figure to ground is the most important thing so her head is going to go here and if it's bright behind her head she's going to have a halo around her head the whole time and it's going to look completely dorky so in this case, the, the background here, the value of this is close to uh, the gray that she shot on, I think. I don't know. But I saved this off, so let's go find it. Uh, so in Bridge, which is my, my way of organizing my images. So if I'm in Mid Journey, this is how I organize myself. Uh, by the way, I did this one the other night, which I thought turned out really nice. If you are a, a supporter of this channel, by the way, uh, in the comment section on YouTube, I put the prompt that I used to make this as well as this image. So if you're wondering how to do this kind of stuff, I've been kind of uh, being good about getting in there and putting up images I've created with the full prompt so you can kind of see what it is that I've made. Uh, I've been playing around a little bit with uh, also the, the GoPro view. So this is like uh, a cat with a GoPro, for example, or a cat surfing from a GoPro. I just think this is really fun. Again, Mid Journey is so much fun. I've done this inside of Stable Diffusion as well, which is a different engine. And I put a, I did a video yesterday on that. Um, and it, it's better in some ways and not as artistic. Uh, but in cases like this, it may be more uh, up along the lines of what you're looking for. Um, I also did a bunch of these um, for an image. Let me see if I bring it up here. That I did a couple of days ago. Oops. Um, I did not do it live and I had to edit it for YouTube. But basically it's it's taking all those elements that are in these other images here and then bashing them together into this. That's probably five or six of those different pieces there. Uh, and this is how I really feel the mid journey um, product is, is adding to my uh, ability to do some of these things. Cause I would not have found this piece of stock photography, nor would I have shot it. Um, a lot of things that I paint by hand uh, are neat and everything, but uh, I would never have painted this. So it's kind of a different, a nice departure, uh, which is how I'm viewing it. But anyway, so I downloaded these three versions. I got this one too, because I liked it. Uh, but then later on, I made this one, which I like better. Uh, so let's go back to Photoshop and we'll put bridge on top and we're just gonna drag it. If you drag it from bridge and you drag it into this, it'll open as a new document. But if you drag it into the existing document, it'll open as a layer. Um, and I don't need it to be full size. You see, it is not the appropriate size here. I think it's a lot of people are challenged by the fact that Mid Journey doesn't produce full sized images. Um, and I really don't care about that at this point. Um, I care more about that the image is what I want it to be. The rest of it will, will get figured out. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm looking at the horizon of where I want it and where this image is here. So it's something like this. And I'll probably have to stretch this a little bit uh, to get it to where I want it to be um, because there's no proportion here that's gonna like a circle or something that's gonna get bent. Um, this is probably fine. Let's try it here. I'll just put it there. And then I'm actually gonna fix it a bit um, I'm not sure that the, yeah, that's a little too high. Um, I want it to be, I want it to look appropriate. So let's cut it out and see what she looks like here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn that off so I can see what I'm doing and come back here. We're just gonna use filter, uh, I'm sorry, select and subject and see, it's gonna probably be partially correct here, hopefully. Uh, the biggest 
part we can fail on is the top of the head there. So that looks actually much better than I thought it would. Um, we do need a little bit of help up here on the type of this gun. So we're just going to go and grab our selection tool here and help it along. So say this stuff here, we need to also pick. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We will be uh, kind of perfecting this a bit in a bit, but um, I do want it to be as close to possible, as po close to good as possible. Let's get rid of these areas here. We don't need these. Uh, and I would rather uh, that I under select than over select. So I, I want to make sure that I get rid of all these ones that are obvious gaps um, more than I'd care about, say, getting this, the part of the reticle here um, is less important. These gaps need to be open when we go in. Otherwise, we're going to have a hell of a time uh, getting rid of them. So I'm just getting this stuff here. Again, just fill her sleeve in quickly. And if I miss this belt, that's fine. Um, I, again, I'd rather under select than over select. This is all good. It's good. If you have any questions, comments, witticisms, criticisms, heresies, or fallacies, throw them in the comments as we're in here, and uh, we'll go from it. Robin says, Stateful, uh, the Stable Diffusion video was very informative. Awesome. Dolly 2, I did, I haven't done any videos on Dolly 2 yet. Um, I do use the tool, um, but uh, it's not as useful to me right now. Um, I will, I, I may use it, uh, but I use it as more of a problem solving tool. Like, oops, I had, um, you're bringing up a coin, I'll bring up real quick here because this is a good a good point. So I did this Alice in Wonderland uh, I uh, challenge and I had this, uh, where was it? I think it's, um, it's a bunch of different pieces obviously and I'm smashing them together. And I think I had, this, yeah, it was this piece and I had it and I hated the hair. So what I did is I dragged this into Dolly 2 and just with the hair and said, give me different hair and it gave me this. So that's how I used Dolly 2 is just to edit this part of the selection and fix the hair. And then I brought it back into Photoshop and finished. I, I did actually a whole video of me dealing with this except for the Dolly 2 part. After I'd finished it, I hated it. And then I went back. Uh, so um, yeah, there are a, a lot of pluses and minuses to each engine, but Dolly is more of a photographic corrector in my mind. And uh, it's not really what I need at, at uh, most of the time, as I put it, most of the time. There are times when I want it, but um, not right now. So I'm just going to kind of uh, whimsically go through here and make sure that this looks a little better. Um, I'd rather, again, have it under-selected than over-selected right now. This is where, if we had issues with the selection, this is where it's going to hurt us. Uh, let's see, how much of the shadow do we want to keep in here? Um, I'm, I'm okay with it being... Uh, a little bit on the iffy side of selected here because uh, we're gonna fix it. Yeah, see, this is uh, this is where this became a challenge or will become a challenge. Uh, and a lot of this probably won't even matter uh, when we get done with it here. As you see, uh, we'll play with some of this. I think people get all caught up in trying to get the perfect selection and uh, most of the time you can get away with murder on this and not need the perfect selection. But uh, we don't want it to be a complete train wreck. I do want the top of her head these hairs are always the hard part. And the gun, I'm not so worried about the gun. Just kind of... Is this top-down camera view helping everybody? I, I wasn't sure. A lot of people are like, I don't know what you're doing with your hands right now. Like, what, what, what are you clicking on? I was thinking this might be a good way to tell that, but I don't know if that's helpful or not. That's probably good enough for what I'm looking for, realistically. Let's go. I get that strap out of the way. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll call that good. Good enough. Quick walkthroughs of uh, correct photos in Dolly 2. Oh, yeah, I can maybe work on that. Yeah. All right, so once we got our selection done, I'm just going to save this thing. Um, call it one because I'm really lazy. And let's go back to this thing. And we have our selection already. We're just going to hold on the Alt key when we click on it, and that'll knock her back out. And again, you can see the values around the hair are about the same as they were before. So this isn't horrible, uh, but I think uh, depending on how we blend this in, we can make it better. So I think I was going to go with soft light here. And why this doesn't matter so much is this blending mode combined with this mask means that we'll end up with all these little pieces that we were all freaked out about. Again, this is, again, when I was saying don't under select, this is the reason why. Like the rest of this looks fantastic. It's that stupid under selection that's a problem. Like in here, here too. I missed those, so now I gotta go back and I gotta fix that, which is a pain in the ass. So let's just do that super fast. I'm gonna turn this walking tablet on and hope it connects. It 
did. Yay. Yay for that. Right, use a brush. And we'll just do our best. Um, we could try this quick selection tool to see if we can get something out of this. We have to be on this layer. This is going to be painful. It doesn't have to be perfect again. Um, I'm just trying to do this the quick and dirty way, which is if I can get a mask in through here, this is easier. And I can't, so let's do it the hard way, which is not that hard. So I just use a brush and see if we color with white in here, we're revealing the background, right? But it is a soft white blending mode, so I can be a little bit aggressive with this. Next, holding out shift draws a straight line. If you're not sure about your mask, you can hit the slash key and it'll show it to you. Uh, so you can kind of say, Ooh, is that, do I have mask in the right spot? You want the softness of the brush to be about the same as the blurriness of the background. Otherwise it's going to look super fake. Yeah, get a little, just kind of throw this in there. This is why I'm, uh, as I say, I'm a big proponent of trying to get it right before you go into here. Good. I, again, I'm, I'm really zoomed in here. Um, I probably don't need to be. And you see the hair is going to look fantastic because the figure to ground is still the same and we don't have to worry about it. So a little bit, a little bit of a shadow around it here because the background is darker than the one I shot around. Uh, so we just try and keep it about the same and we won't have any problems. So. Always work at 100% zoomed in, by the way, if you're trying to do something like this. Don't don't guess from a distance. You'll fail every time. Uh, so this shadow looks pretty good. I wonder. Um, so I'm just playing with if I can push this rest of the image up into her shoe a little bit to help with the shadow. Something like that. And this shadow looks pretty darn good in through here, but let's see if we can again improve upon it. Pushing it just a little bit further. That blending mode is really the secret to this whole thing. That's a bit much. Let's get that a little further in here. The, the most convincing, or the, the part that needs the most convincing when you're working on something like this is the shadow. And it's not the big shadow that's the convincing, or the, the part that needs the help usually. It's what we call, I guess we call it the crack shadow. It's the ambient occlusion shadow. It's the part where you have two objects that are almost touching. There's a shadow that's cast right in that crack. And if you don't represent that, then it's gonna not look quite right. Okay, we can detach the image from the mask now. So I was gonna try and flip this image um, just to see if it looked better this way. And I don't know, do I like it better? I think I like it better this way because the lights on this side, lighting is the huge, huge giveaway if you're doing something wrong here. So um, we wanna make sure that when we're combining things like this that we have lighting that makes sense. And that's one of the other things I always do is I have to go back to Dali and look for other images that make more sense outside Dali, mid journey and make sure that I'm getting something that makes sense. Let me adjust that. Is that helpful having that top down view? Is that just useless and I should turn that off? Is that annoying? Is that annoying is the jazz in the background? You tell me, you let me know. Okay, so I got that done. I'm happy with that. This background's a bit on the light side. So let's, uh, let's bring it up. I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. And uh, obviously this is from the original image. So if I alt click on that, I can get back to here and let's, uh, let's get rid of that. So use a little AI built into Photoshop here. We use content aware fill. Oops, on this layer. Everything is good. Thank you. All right. Um, area between heels of those black boots is not showing the background. Yeah, I, I, we got to go back around through this, but it's a good, good point. Yeah, there's some pieces of this that are a little iffy. Now, so this is pretty dark. Like when we look at this, I think this is too dark and it's because of this, uh, this original background is too dark. So let's add a curve, let's brighten it um, a lot, but let's do this. Let's, once we get it bright, we're gonna use this mask here and we're using gradient. Um, 
set to black and transparent, what we can do is we can fill it backwards and have it only affect the background. And obviously mask her out as well. Oops, let's, do, let's put this in a group. If we put these in a group, uh, then you can put a mask on the group as well, uh, which is also tricksy. Uh, so now this is only affecting the background. Just adds a little bit more something. Otherwise, this without this on, it's just fading to black, which is which might be fine. Uh, but um, I don't really like that. Okay, so yep, you you nailed it there. HMR six thirty eight. Your parents are very creative with naming, by the way. So I'm just going to use a little marker here. Scribble this in here. Um, I'd rather over correct and then come back and then fix it than I would try and weasel my way into these little tiny spaces with a tiny brush. That's just hard work. Let's do this. I'm just going to use these back here. Just make sure the hardness of the brush you're using and the hardness of the object here, the, the transition between those is the same and it should look good. Thank you for spotting that, by the way. That was awesome. All right, so I'll put that mask back on that one. Um, you just hold down Alt key when you drag that around and you can remask things. Let's hit save because we haven't done that yet. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, without, obviously, we haven't done any skin or anything else yet. We're still just playing with the background. So the background is a different color than she is. Um, Often we use Photoshop selection tool for focus object sky. Um, pretty often. I use the selection tool all the time. Oh, the other ones for like tool focuses. No, I, uh, only subject. I don't use it for anything else. I don't use any of those other ones. Everything else I get to um, through brute force. Uh, simply because I know what I want. All right, I'm going to fix the color of these two because these don't these don't match, right? One is warmer and one is not. And plus, the black point may not be the same. So let's look at that. So we need to do that. We need to, uh, we need to make this go black and white. And the only way to do that, by the way, not the best way, the only way to do it is to make a gray layer and set it to one of these bottom three uh, things. There's, there's no other way to do it. Uh, if, if somebody tells you there's another way to do it, I will show them that they are wrong. Um, the black and white adjustment layer doesn't do it. The hue and saturation layer adjustment layer doesn't do it. You can only do it this way. All right. <laughs> and I can't really tell if it's the same. So let's do this. Let's add, uh, let's add an exposure over the whole image. Just kind of bring it up a bit. And say, now if this was a black and white image, does it look like they're both from the same thing? It does not, right? The background is much dimmer than she's much brighter. Uh, so we got to fix that. Now, obviously, this is just a temporary. Both these are just temporary layers. So don't think this is what this is going to look like. So what we need to do is we need to make the background brighter so that it seems like it fits more with her. So something like this, maybe. Maybe even clip the whites a little bit. No, let's not do that. Bring it up like this. Something like this, perhaps. So now we know the black and white looks good. So if we turn this off, now the brightness we know is at least more reasonable. Uh, so now let's let me get rid of this now. Let's fix the coloration difference. And the way to fix that is to use the same gray layer, but put it on luminosity, which makes this train wreck here. And then we'll put a curve on it so we can see what we're doing. Again, I use I use a lot of these tools to help me see. Uh, these are all temporary. Uh, so in here, all right. So let's now let's use color balance against this background because that's really the secret here. And we need to clip it so it's only working on the background. So what we need to do is we need to adjust the background so that it matches kind of the same uh, coloration that she's giving off. So I'm just going for the midtones here. Shadows. I mean, there's a thousand ways to do this, by the way. This is not necessarily the only way, but it's the way that I do it. So the shadows here. Just trying to figure out what I like here. I may not end up doing this method for this, but um, usually this works. Maybe not today. Maybe not this image. I can't get that orange that I need here. Hmm. Alright, let's try the highlights. Let's work on that. Like this. 
Yeah, that's looking better. Let's see her um, dark area and this dark area are different. So we gotta go back to the shadow and fix this thing. It's not quite right. That looks better. All right, so then if I turn this train wreck off, these should now have similar tone. And it looks like they do. This is very orange, but um, it matches her skin. Uh, which may not be ideal. Like maybe you want them to be a different color orange or something along that lines. Um, but now we can go in and we can at least, we have a, a place to start, right? So we can say, well, let's make the highlights a little bit different, but there's you no, know, the shadows are now at least this color here and this color here work better. So if we turn this on and off, we can see it just fits better. All right, so we don't need these anymore. All right, now uh, overall, now over the whole image. Now, once you've got this in place, the goal is to, do operations against the entire image, uh, not just one thing. So if we do them against one thing, then we find out that, that things just look fake, uh, like whatever this is here. Um, we wanna try and get rid of things that look fake by uh, simply combining all these images or all these issues together using multiple, oops, that doesn't look as good as I wanted it to. Uh, multiple operations. So like the first one I would probably use is like a curve. Let's just put a curve and put it over the whole image. So I just a little bit of contrast here. So something along this lines, maybe. And I hate it. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, if we're not sure, we're going to do this in Capture One as well uh, as another option. Let's use a color lookup. I like these for um, ideas more than anything else. Like we may not keep one, but at least it's a thought. Just looking through all of them, see if there's something that inspires me. The foggy night one is actually pretty cool. Literally. Futuristic bleak, this looks pretty good too. And actually that one does too as well, it's a bit warmer. I think this character, the Punisher character wants something cooler. So let's go with um, let's go with, let's try Foggy Night and see what we can do with it. So we don't need it this strength, obviously, so we'll just back it down a bit. So we can find something we like. Like, that's, uh, that's pretty good. These lights look totally fake, uh, because they're not bright anymore. And this is one of those things I see people do. They take something that's bright and they knock it down and go, oh, that's better. That looks like ass. So let's fix it. So let's just gonna grab, um, a white brush. And I actually have some brushes, um, that I purchased, God, years ago. I don't even know if they're even available anymore, but they're like the ones you learn to love. <laughs> um, I have so many brushes. Um, what am I looking for? I am looking for, let's hidden, where is it? Let's uh, hidden. So these have a lot of different brushes that are just kind of interesting. So I'll just use this one, um, I'll make it big. And we want this to be 100%, we're just gonna click on it right there. I don't like that one. Let's try this one. Much bigger. Okay. So just working on an idea here. Um, I know it looks terrible, but don't worry about it yet. Worry about it in a minute. <laughs> so it's on its own layer, so that looks good. I'm gonna do one over here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna blur those because uh, they look totally fake, right? And then, oops, I did something. Okay, and then I probably set them to like screen. Maybe overlay, this looks good. And then we're gonna do it again. Um, so we're just gonna do smaller this time. And we're gonna, again, we're gonna blur it. So you see the exact same blur you did before. That's pretty good. Maybe. And the same blur we did before. Because we're lazy. Right, that looks more believable to me. Uh, we can combine these together, probably. Nope. So we have to keep these apart because each one is using a different layer. Um, there are other ways to combine them, but it's nothing I want to talk about today. So let's just use this one. Put them in a folder called the lights. If I can spell it, lights. Okay. That looks good. And we want this color lookup to be at the top uh, so that it affects the coloration of these lights as well as so they don't look totally fake. Do I like that one? There was another one in here that I liked as much. Um, 
crisp winter. Yeah, let's go with this one. I like this one better, I think. Um, I don't like this these, uh, the bright spot in the middle as much, I don't think. Let's get rid of that. Let's just go with the one light. That looks good. All right, I'm happy with that. We're still going to color grade this image, so if it isn't perfect yet, that's fine. Um, I wouldn't mind some sort of other atmosphere here. It's just kind of, it's fine, but um, let's go textures. Let's go find some dust. I love me some dust. Dust and particles. Uh, I think there's a link down below to the the place where I got these. I use these a ton. I got a lot of them. That's not the dust I want. Um, dust overlays. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, dust. Bring on the dust. So for something subtle. Uh, that's not. Doesn't look like it's snowing severely. This may be a fail as well. I mean it like this. Let's use this one. I just like trying these things, and if they fail, it's no big deal. Like you know, it didn't cost us anything. Just throw that on there and put it on top. Or actually, put it under there and put it to screen. And it looks like it's snowing, exactly like we thought it would. Which um, we might be able to suppress a bit by putting a curve on it. So, something like this. And then what we could do, I actually pretty much like that, I think. Um, I don't like all these. Let's rasterize this thing. And let's use the patch tool to get rid of some of these that uh, annoy me, that look like it's snow. I'm just dragging these into a space where there is nothing. I like it around the lights quite a bit. That's pretty great. Okay, let's uh, let's retouch your skin. So we'll put all this in a basket. Doink. Save it. And then let's retouch your skin. I have a uh, skin retouching base. It's available uh, for free down below. It's just a link to my store. Of course, you can always donate. You could throw a dollar on it. That'd make me happy, camper. I'm looking for something that's just blurry enough to see her skin but not texture so we're just separating the texture from the color um you sh there's no loss in doing this right there's no it's not a mistake it's not people like oh my god i like that method it's not the method that's the problem it's because people don't know how to use it um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the texture off and we're just gonna fix the um fix this part so i'm going to use my healing brush and I'm just gonna go and Oops, work on the right layer would be great. Oh my god, this thing is laggy. What is going on? Current layer, color. Should be no texture in here. Something is causing some lag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Capture One down. Because that's what I'm going to blame. It might just be because of the save as well. And just cover up any details that you see. She's got great skin, so I'm not really worried about doing too much of this. Just anything that's going to bother her. She'd be like, what's up with my cheek? It was a pretty aggressive lighting. It was a down lighting on her. Um, if you can't get things to work out right, too, you can also use the blending, or the, the mixer brush. But just be aware that, like, this is not a great way to retouch an image. Um, you can use this sparingly. But don't go nuts with it because it covers up all the little nuances that make it look like it's skin. Which, um, if they look like plastic, you lose, right? Uh, so don't don't make them look like plastic. That's that's not the goal. The goal is to have it look like skin. Skin in her best day, right? And you don't want to zoom in too far. So if you zoom in too far, then you're you're committing. Unless it's your wife, don't commit. Some of this mask is not great. Uh, now that we see like this outline here, let's go back and fix that. Let's get this mask here. And what I want to do is I want to I want to cover up part of the shoe more, so it blends in with this mask. So just something like this. Because again, it was shot in a, a little bit lighter than what we have on there now. So that value issue is going to cause this halo. OK, 
Plus we are working with the texture layer on. So once we turn the texture layer back on, a lot of this will resolve itself. But um, when the texture layer is off, we can kind of see some of the errors that we may be generating. So I just want to fix all that now. Um, so I don't hate myself later for mixing it, for messing it up. Just subtle, I'm way outside of where I need to be there. Um, I just want to kind of get the edge of it, but barely get the edge of it. This is an area we totally missed, it's like. Something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, nobody's gonna get in here and, and pick it apart. They're not gonna notice this level of detail. Even if you print this thing, it's still gonna look fantastic. this part is <laughs> is being featured in which case yeah this part sucks uh, so I got it we got to zoom in here and we can turn our texture layer back on to see what we're doing here in this but we obviously missed a couple of spots in here harder edge has to edge has to match right shift key helps you draw a straight line that was decent So I'll be picking out or kicking out another mid journey video here pretty soon. Uh, I've got uh, a couple other pieces I want to work on, plus a monthly art challenge that I'm doing, so or a weekly art challenge. So I'm going to post that, or I'm going to work on that, as I say, with you. So if you're interested in watching me and participating in that, we'll be doing that here fairly soon. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, might be yet today. Um, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do there. But figured out this glow is unacceptable looks like the glow is actually part of something oh, well we'll just keep it oh it's this white strap okay I'm like what is that save and let's go back and finish the skin uh, looks like the rest of the skin is pretty good I just want to look at the hands and the legs and make sure this is all good yeah that little bit of snow we added is kind of creating some blotchiness on through here so let's Make sure that we mask that out. Um, she's not going to love us for that. Or using the patch tool. And just patching it with an area that doesn't have any snow or a different kind of snow or something that's not weird. Let's see. That's distracting. There we go. Don't want it on her face. That'd be bad. It's like we don't have any really on our face here. Okay, and then we go back and now we fix the texture for thing. And I guess her skin is again really good, so um, it seemed to work. There we go. Always with a hard brush. Always. And if it does this. Um, it's because you have it set to current layer, or not current layer, current layer and normal stamp. Huh. What is, okay, I was going to say what is going on, that should definitely work. these red spots is really easy to if they bother you they don't really bother me oh, that looks very good all right that's the skin let's do a dodge and burn on her to add a little bit of kick to it so i'm just gonna get a it's just a gray layer uh, set to soft light that's all it is it's nothing spectacular and we're gonna go in and if we can. Hello, welcome tablet. I'm ready to replace you. I'm really, really close to replacing you, Mr. Welcome Tablet. And I wanna do this actually on an overlay layer, I've decided. And you can see what we're doing is we're drawing white on this. Uh, because if you draw in if you draw with white, it's a screen. If you draw with, with the black, it's a it's a multiply, actually. Uh, so it's a really easy way to kind of correct in a space. Um, hit D to turn it back to back in white. X toggles between black and white. And we want to go really low flow. And I'm just going to color in like a little bit on here under her eyes. 
Bridge of Renowns, the Snot Trough. That's the technical name for it, I don't know. Anyway. I'm sure of it. two over here don't touch the whites of the eyes that looks dorky just pop the highlight on the catch light and then the uh, the opposite side of the iris from the catch light those are your two areas don't don't color in the whites that looks like again unless you're trying to make an alien um, it should be pretty subtle you can also take it over the lip here and add a little shine to the lip looks a little more glossy but Some to the leg here. Like that. That looks pretty good. Good enough for what we need to do here, I think. So let's let's save this off or jump into capture one and add the finishing touches to this thing. Um, you can do a lot of this same stuff that we've done so far in Lightroom, so that's not a big deal. Um, the part we're going to get into now, you may not be able to do in Lightroom. Um, we'll see. And I'm looking at the ground here. Um, this looks a little bit bright to me, like it looks too much fakey fake. So we have, I thought we had a curve here for this, didn't we? Yeah, we might want to add this curve over this curve. Is this the, yeah, so let's. Let's add a gradient here as well. It's set to black and transparent. That's why I can get away with doing that kind of thing. We don't want to take the color balance away because that's the, the part that makes it the same color. That looks better. It just looked a little weird. In fact, it still looks a little weird. Bring it up. There we go. save and start again all right so now we'll go and combine all this in uh, capture one so that it looks real so by the way if you want this Photoshop document it is available um, it's the uh, professional level channel membership so if you are a person who wants those uh, there are a few of them in there right now um, and you get them from all the previous ones so if you're looking for this I'll rename these layers so it makes sense uh, but it's a way for me to give back to people who are are really helping with the channel. So if you're interested in this Photoshop document, it will be available. It'll be uh, a little bit smaller because this is going to be uh, probably over two, two and a half gig. We'll knock it down to about 60 meg or so and put it in there. But all the layers and everything will be intact so you can kind of see how all that fits together. All right, so we'll wait for this thing to be done and we'll take a drink of our morning monster. Almost done. This is the hard part, is waiting for this, my raid array to catch this and upload it so that we're all on the same page. I think these lights turn out pretty nice. It's looked really fake when we started out and you're probably already concerned. You're like, it's gonna look like trash. But that's a mid-journey background for you. Like I would not have come up with that background myself. Um, probably wouldn't have come up with the background myself. Ideally, I would have had the background in mind before I did this photo. Um, but I told Jennifer that I was going to get in here and I was going to get this photo done for her uh, sooner than later. Uh, so she's going to get it now and be happy and not be able to complain about it. So that's a good thing. I've been working on my Catan board, by the way, if you're into laser cutters or whatever. So I worked, this is my second iteration of that now, uh, of that design. So I will, I'll probably do a day when I do my laser cutter stuff on here. I don't know. It's my channel of, of random stuff that Scott's like, Scott likes. So, All right, back into Capture One. We're going to kill Photoshop off here. Um, we, we already moved a thing there, so we'll just go back here. Bring up Capture One. And go to Output for this session. which should be what we just worked on. All right, so now let's finish it. So we can no longer use this exposure thing. This this looks like ass. Don't do this. 
Uh, once you've left raw and you come back from Photoshop, the only way you can do it is your brightness control. Right? This is the proper way. Everything else looks stupid. Don't, don't do it. And then you can add a little bit. I wouldn't use this maybe um, as I would use a curve and lift the bottom. Personal preference, obviously. That's all personal preference. And then how much contrast do we want? I'm gonna find the way I use controls is I just wiggle them until I like what I see. It's don't, um, I don't really know if I want more or less. I just kind of run with it and see what happens. This method seems to work pretty well across the board. None of these really matter. Um, I'm not gonna worry, I never play with saturation, or rarely do I play with saturation. All right, uh, let's go to style and we'll start in shadows and we're just going to grab this and pull it all the way to the edge. We're going to go all the way around and see what kind of mood the image wants. Kind of find the color you like. And then decide how much of that color you want. This is a nice green. Good tones, almost always the opposite. Let's almost be this way. Is their skin? If you want her skin to be more pale, you you add the opposite. Like I don't want her to look like that, so maybe a little less color than she normally has. Maybe she's maybe she's good. Right? Highlights are the lights in the background, pretty much anything super bright, which we got to be careful with unless you're trying to again tone them a certain direction. I think a little warmth here is a good idea. This looks better to me than this. Oh, I just measure in the extreme, find the color I like, and then just tone it down. Just like this. There we go. Looks good. And then let's let's do um, let's add some clarity. Again, this is the thing you can't do in Lightroom, but you can do in Capture One. We're gonna add a new layer for. Actually, we don't have to do that because I made a thingy for it. Now we have these style brushes, and I have a custom style brush, and I have a background pop. So if I put this on here, you're going to see that it does all kinds of cray-cray things. Do not hit her skin with this. Okay, this will be unfortunate when it comes to skin. So just mirror this all over the place. That M for mask. Let's go all over. And then we're going to hit E for eraser. And we're just going to kind of pull it back a bit where she is. I don't want it on her skin. And I got to be careful not to make it look like there's a halo. But it shouldn't because you see how big this brush is? It's not like you're trying to... Do something like this and you got this little tiny halo that's like a dead giveaway a giant halo like this no one's gonna see that and sure enough you can't see that at all at least i can't how much of this do we want something like that maybe and then maybe one for her eyes i have another brush for that yep that's a little close hey jennifer that's a big view there around the eyes just a little bit of a sharpness and a little bit of again another uh clarity that's all it is that's all this magical thing is that looks pretty good and then i want to do one for the hair the only reason i'm using these by the way they do almost the exact same thing but each one is on its own um layer and it names it because i'm super lazy so if i go in here now and i just brush on their hair it's going to name a new one called hair that's the only reason i'm really using these uh, because they're almost exactly the same adjustment I'm not really worried about it. I wonder if this will good in the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Gun. There we go. I wonder. I wonder will it look good on this pleather? Yeah, I gotta be careful with the white. The white is that's unfortunate. But on this, oops, on this part, it's looking pretty good. Oops. Don't hit the strap there. How about the boots? Work on the boots. Maybe. I don't want to call like super attention to the boots, so I'm gonna be kind of careful with that. But um, I like this fold, these three folds here are nice. Like little arm thing here. Alright, mask, make sure we're not getting any skin anywhere. Uh, we can actually go all the way around here. And then erase back. I'm not a person who takes a lot of time to make this super, like, awesome, close 
mask. You usually don't need it. You're you're not you're not sending it to the moon, as I like to say. Right? It doesn't need to be the most mathematically accurate thing that has ever been invented. Um, but if you the mistakes that most people make are is if they color in this in this red goes in the background, it will create a halo, and you'll see this halo. At least I see the halo. Uh, so I always try and have it inside because there's no halo if it doesn't extend outward. Um, at least not when I can detect. So I'm just going to let that end up good enough. That's kind of sloppy. That's almost good. This is weak. The reflection on those boots would be kind of awesome, so we'll just play that. Good enough. So that's with and without that little pop. This is um, we can adjust this even more. Like eyes, obviously subtle background pop. pretty good. So now what I'll do is I'll just let this marinade for uh, a couple hours and come back to it and make sure that I'm really happy with it and that it's got all the colors that I like. Like maybe it's a little green. Like I haven't decided yet. I'm still still staring at it and I need to walk away. I need to walk away from it and come back and decide if it needs to be a little bit more blue. I'm already deciding it needs more blue. How about that? How about that? Them apples. Because we did color grade it a bit in Photoshop, so we do already have something going on. Um, and I do think I want to lift that curve a little bit more. Down here. Slightly. Hold on your Alt key, it will do a, like a micro adjustment. So I don't like a pure black on here. I think that's pretty good. There you go. These little dots turn out to look like stars almost. Uh, so we got rid of the ones that look like it was annoying. And I really like it inside of this uh, ray here, the crespicular ray. That's very good. I'm happy with that. So there you go. That's a little mid journey thrown in with our subject matter. Um, and uh, if you're wondering, do I own this image? Uh, I do. Uh, this obviously she's featured, and the background is a background that is public domain because uh, it's AI generated, so we can't copyright it, um, but um, we have licensure to use it according to Mid-Jersey. So if you're wondering about that, that's how we can use these things and they're okay. Now, would I put this in a print competition? I could, but I'd have to show that I used uh, you know, both her photo and then the background photo that I used. And so it's kind of like a stock photo in a lot of ways, whether it's AI generated or not, it's a stock photo. Um, and I have to show that it's my that it's a stock photo that I that I used. Um, if it's for print competition, I really should have shot the background as well as her. It should not be something that is, um, you know, like this. I again, uh, those competitions are showing how good you are as a photographer, not how good you are at hiding your sources. Right? <laughs> that's that the competition. Uh, that's how you want to try and do this. Anyway, that's what I got for today. So we'll put this uh, again. This file. The Photoshop version will go up into the professionals folder, um, which I appreciate. We have two professionals currently, and um, I will actually throw them on the screen here real quick so you can see them. This list is a bit old. I have to update the uh, people here, the fine sponsors and uh, the professionals for the for the channel. And Galia, who is still the top of the food chain for contributing to the channel, really, really appreciate her uh, doing what she's doing for the channel. But so that's what I got for today, gang. So if you liked this and you thought it was great, give it the thumbs up. That's the equivalent to clapping and only like one out of every hundred people bothers to do it. So I appreciate it. It lets YouTube know that this was something that other people should see. And again, I really appreciate it. And thank you for helping me get to 10,000. That was huge. And I didn't think that would ever happen. So or at least that would have been happening. So like by the time I'm like 70 or something like that. So I really appreciate it. Once again, thanks for hanging around with me today. And again, I'll probably do another video either later today or tomorrow uh, for the weekly challenge and the weekly AI challenge. So we'll be using Dolly. We'll probably use a little bit of stable and maybe some um, mid, obviously some mid journey because that's my favorite. So everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.